Um, so right now we have a single camera and a single radar. Okay. Um, for our very early launch, we will probably only be supporting cars that already have radars inside of them, mm. um, but we will be asking the user to install a camera. Okay, so the camera installs by the dashboard or something to that effect. Yep. And what is the camera doing and what is the radar doing in these systems? Um, um, explain it as if like, you know, a lay person sure. you know, is, is buying the car. What exactly is, is happening? Sure. Um, so we use, uh, we use deep learning mm -hmm. uh, to process the picture from the camera. And what we get from that picture is the predicted path, where the car should go, where the lanes are, and where the other cars around you are. Got it. So you now know how to stay in the lane, what a good path to take is, even if there's no lanes, and how to avoid hitting cars and also pedestrians around you. Got it. Um, and what is the radar doing in this case then? So the, it's very hard from an image to determine how fast a car is going accurately. Ah. Um, so you can do this, and humans do it, but humans do it rather poorly. If you ask, if there's a car at about 100 meters distance from your car, and you ask a human how far away that car is, most humans will say something like 40 meters. Um, that's a calibration issue. Humans who are calibrated can do better, but they still have like plus or minus 10 meters. Now, you can drive with that, but if you have a radar, you can drive much better. Mm -hmm. You can keep like an exact following distance behind a car. You can know exactly how much your, we call it the lead car, is decelerating, so you can match his deceleration. So our system works in stop and go traffic, and it feels better than any human I've ever seen drive. Really? And the reason we can do that is because humans are really bad at driving in traffic. They're really bad. I mean, have you ever noticed like when a human will like look down for a second and then they'll look up, they'll see the car in front of them moved and they'll slam on the gas because they've yeah. got to catch up and then they'll slam on the brake? This actually causes traffic. Um, imagine instead just gliding with the car in front of you. And then imagine all the cars started gliding. Mm. Um, this would alleviate traffic and fender benders. It would alleviate traffic, it would alleviate fender benders. But the great thing is, this doesn't require a mass install of a lot of people. The day you get one of these systems, it is usable to you today. Our system can drive through traffic, you turn it on, you sit back, and it drives in the traffic. Hmm. I pay attention, right. but you know, it's good. And with the crash we saw this yeah. past week, this has been a lot of attention. We don't know all the facts, obviously, so you can't tell me or, and I can't tell you, nobody can tell if this person was watching a movie or sleeping. Sure. We don't know. But it does seem like there is a high probability this person, in addition to the, this person didn't see the truck that cut them off yeah. or turned in front of them. Yeah. So what is your handicapping of that situation? And what do you mean by handicap? Um, what do you think actually happened in that situation? Um, my... Guess. Yeah, it's, from, it's an educated guess. It's, it's, it's an educated guess from the things I've read. Um, Brad Templeton uh, has some very good blog posts mm -hmm. about this, about the, about the crash. Um, my guess is that the driver was not paying attention. The car didn't see the truck. The driver didn't see the truck. He hit the truck. Yeah. Um, it seems, from what I can tell, too, that the truck made the turn before uh, the driver could see the Tesla. So the truck is in the middle of making this left turn. Normally a car that's like 200 meters back, you know, 200 meters back, you see it, you slow down in time and it's all safe. Right. Um, it's not completely safe. Actually, that road really isn't that well designed. Yeah. Um, when you really think about it, if a truck can make a left turn and not be able to finish the left turn in the time it takes a car going 10 miles over the speed limit to reach a collision, that's not a well-designed road. It should, been, it should have not allowed people to make a left. Yes. It should have been an off-ramp, an overhead yes. ramp, or a stop sign, yes. or, or a stop sign or a stop light. Um, it turns out when you look at the statistics, this is a fairly common accident. Because um, it's, it's, it's not something that humans are expecting, right? You're cruising down a highway at 65 miles an hour, um, and you, know, you just don't expect there to be a big truck there, right? right. So this accident happens, uh, happened long before Tesla Autopilot. This is right. not the first time anyone has ever hit a truck making a left turn on a highway. Right, because trucks take a long time take a long to time. pass through. If it was yeah. a regular car... Oh, if it was a regular car, it would have been no problem. Right. The truck, you know, you got to put into gear. you got to really get it up to speed. The other issue, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is these trucks uh, in the United States don't have a fender, no. a, a guardrail, so you can actually have a car go underneath yeah. them or from the back submerge underneath them, which, by the way, decapitates the car and the driver, which sadly is what happened here, I believe. Yeah. Um, is in now if they had had that rail on the side, it would have been a what a forty five mile an hour accident, which would have been sur easily survivable yeah. in a Tesla. Yeah, yeah. Te the Tesla Model S is an incredibly safe car. Um, you know, you got to give it to Tesla for that. But 
you know, your frontal collision depends on the front of the car hitting something. If your collision is up at the high cabin height, you know. So is there anything in the self-driving world in technology today that, is there a tweak that could be made that would well help solve for this? But yeah, so it is important to understand that uh, Tesla's system and our system is not a self-driving system. Right? right now, you know, people say, oh, well, Tesla shouldn't market it as autopilot then. No, this guy had had tons of experience in the car. He knew exactly what it was capable of and what it was not capable of. Right. The truth is humans get distracted, self-driving system or no self-driving system. Right. Uh, distracted driving is a, is a huge cause of death in this country. Um, so it, it, it's, although specifically, and we can get into the technical specifics of what happened in this case, we should not expect these systems to be able to react in all situations. Right. And if you are using one of these systems, you should always be alert. Just as, you know, people are calling this the first self-driving car accident. And it really isn't because it's not a self-driving car. It's a driver assistance system. Right. And then it's certainly not the first driver assistance system accident. How many people have had cruise control on, fallen asleep, and flown off highways at 65 miles an hour? Many. Right? Many. Many. Um, so it's not, you know, it, it is not, this accident is not that unprecedented. Let me just take a quick moment to tell all the startups listening that Scott Walker is an amazing attorney. I know because a lot of my um, incubator companies and investments use Scott Walker, and we just had a discussion about law firms on our discussion, uh, our secret discussion group, and people were talking about how much they love working with Scott Walker and the Walker Corporate Law Firm. They're a boutique law firm specializing in the representation of entrepreneurs and startups, and they encourage fixed fees. They believe billable hours reward inefficiency, and they just love to tell you this is what it's going to cost. How refreshing is that as an entrepreneur to not have that sticker shock, to not have that fear of opening up the PDF from your law firm and getting that ridiculous surprise that they went three times over. You're not going to have that happen with the Walker Corporate Law Group because they do fixed fees and all their lawyers have a decade or two of experience. No junior associates who are getting on the job training with your startup. They do mergers and acquisitions, licensing arrangements, terms of service, privacy policies, and they just love working with startups. The founder, Scott Ed Walker, is a total uh, mention, just a lover of startups. I've known him for a long time. He comes to all my events. And um, he's indefatigable in his support of founders. You can give him a call right now, 415 979 9998 415 is San Francisco 979-9998 979-9998 or email Scott at Walker Corporate Law Scott at Walker Corporate Law dot com or visit Walker Corporate Law dot com and you can follow Scott Ed Walker on the Twitter at Scott Ed Walker and everybody go ahead and thank at Scott Ed Walker on Twitter if you're a super fan because he has been I think he's the longest running partner of the show so thanks again to Scott Walker for representing my companies and doing a great job at it Thank you.